I got some news about the Bronco, but it's not the Bronco that you think. It's the upcoming pickup truck. In fact, Ford has two pickup trucks coming down the line. We're gonna talk about that. And Jeep isn't sitting still. The Wrangler Rubicon 392 concept was out seen scaring some horses. Maybe they were Broncos. But first, let's talk about a very mysterious V8 in the Land Rover Defender. The brand new Land Rover Defender was introduced just last year as a 2020 model, and they're actually very difficult to get. They start at about $49,000. So there's two Defenders. One of them is called the 110, and that starts with a two liter engine that makes about 296 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. So that's what you get for about $50,000. Now on the 110 SE, if you spend a little bit more money, that's the four door, by the way, the 90 is the two door. The SE starts at about $62,250. Now the 110 SE, that's the four door. The 90 is the two door version. The SE with a three liter, Inline six, making 395 horsepower, four to six pounds feet of torque. That starts at about $62,250. So it's not inexpensive, but we're making like pretty solid power here. And this is really a luxury SUV. So it weighs about 5,200 pounds. It's not too light, but the demand overall has been very, very strong for the Defender. In fact, it's been difficult for Land Rover to keep up. According to Car Sales Base, they sold about 600 of these in June. That was just the first month it was available, so just last month. And they sold about almost 400 in Europe. But there's a brand new V8 that is rumored to be coming. In fact, I'd say it's more than just a rumor. Here it is testing at the Nürburgring in Germany, which is a famed test track. You're probably familiar with it that a lot of manufacturers go there to test their cars under all kinds of difficult real world type road conditions. It's a very challenging track. So this thing sounds really good to me. How much do we know about this V8? Let's talk about that. So, so far, mm, not too much, unfortunately, but here's a couple of cookie crumbs that we can kind of follow. BMW currently partners with companies like Toyota. They make the chassis and the engine for the new Supra. And previously, BMW has actually partnered with Land Rover back in the early 2000s. And right now they actually do have a partnership. They are collaborating on future electrified drivetrains. So we can expect to see something coming maybe from both companies in the future as they continue this work together. Here's what the rumor is, it's really interesting. So currently BMW has a 4.4 liter V8 and this thing is mega. It makes up to 617 horsepower and about 553 pound feet of torque. That is a lot. So where can you find this? So right now, some of the vehicles it's in are the X5M and the X6M competition. These are pretty big SUVs. The X6M starts at about $106,000. So I don't think we're gonna see that level of power in the Land Rover, but... So remember the current three liter, the inline six, makes about 395 horsepower. So I would expect if they're gonna put this V8 into a Land Rover, I think it's gonna make about 500 plus. That seems to be sort of the right level for it to be at. This is not the biggest vehicle in the world. It would be very, very quick with 500 horsepower. Right now with the current three liter, zero to 60 is in about 5.8 seconds. That's actually pretty quick for an SUV. We don't know what the price tag is yet, but I am definitely looking forward to this. I think it's a great move for a Land Rover. Next up, we're gonna talk about some bucking Broncos that seem to be scared by a certain Wrangler. It is called the Wrangler Rubicon 392 concept, and I'm pretty sure this is not just gonna stay a concept. So FCA is definitely fighting back against the Ford onslaught with the Bronco. But there's something you should know, FCA is not gonna be called FCA for too much longer. In fact, they've been working on a merger for a long time with PSA Group, which is a European car company, and they've got brands like Peugeot and Citroën underneath the uh, the umbrella of that. If you're in the UK, they probably call it Citroen. So the new company is gonna be called Stellantis. So here's the thing, you can't even really order a Bronco yet. 
yes, you can put in your $100 deposit, but the online configurator is not available yet. That should be coming up next month. And by the way, if you are ordering a Bronco and you're sort of confused about all the options, I've got a video right up here. It's very helpful. It'll tell you pretty much everything you need to know about ordering your Bronco. And Jeep knows that you can't really order a Bronco yet. They know, in fact, that you probably won't get a Bronco into your sweaty little hands until next summer. That's right. It's going to take about a year before you're really going to get these into dealers. I know they're promising April. That's just going to be the first batch. It's going to be a little while. So Jeep is taking advantage of this little pause to drop some big power numbers into the Wrangler. And so to let you know what they've done, they dropped this very interesting little ad. Oh, look, are, are those horses? Maybe they're, maybe they're Broncos. And then they talk about the 450 horsepower that it makes, which is quite a lot, actually. It also makes 450 pound-feet of torque. So this is the 6.4 liter engine. It's definitely not an eco anything. It's a Hemi and it makes amazing power and torque at pretty low RPMs. So much power and torque that Jeep is saying it's going to go zero to 60 in less than five seconds. That's pretty quick. That sounds a little bit terrifying to me almost, but they're making some other changes to this too. As you might've guessed, this doesn't really fit directly into the Jeep chassis the way it is right now. So they had to do a little widening to the frame, some adjustments to the frame, and it's also got some revised engine mount. And not to be outdone by the Bronco with its 35 inch Sasquatch wheel and tire combo. This has got 37 inch tires and it's got a two inch lift kit as well. So they're really sort of stepping it up. They're going just a little bit above the Bronco. They're trying to one up Ford. It's pretty clear what's going on here. And if you didn't know the last time that Jeep had a V8 in a Wrangler was 1981. Next up, let's talk about an upcoming Bronco pickup truck. Ford did something that kind of really pissed off a lot of people. And that is up the number of first editions that they are making available. At first it was 3,500. Those sold out immediately, I think within a couple of hours. And then a couple days ago, they changed the allocation to 7,000 first editions. And of course, those all sold out very quickly too. As you can imagine on Facebook and other places, people really brought out the pitchforks. People were upset that their investment was gonna be worth less down the line. So just a little bit of financial advice, even though you didn't really ask for it, I'm gonna give it to you. If you think that a Bronco, which is gonna sell in the hundreds of thousands over the next couple of years. And if you think that 7,000 of them is gonna make a whole bunch of difference to the final uh, price that you're gonna get for it 10 years later, I think you should be taking your financial advice from a financial advisor and not what you read online. And if you're enjoying news content like this, please subscribe, you're gonna get more and it really helps the channel distribute this information more broadly. We're gonna talk about two pickup trucks. So first up, Automobile Magazine has a source and they say there is a pickup truck coming down the line that is based on the Bronco. This is the bigger Bronco and their source says that it is going to have the same two engines that we get now, the 2.3 liter EcoBoost and the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Now we don't really know what the power output is gonna be because this is probably a couple years away, but they also have been reporting that there is gonna be no three liter that I reported earlier might be available in a future Raptor or Warthog edition. In fact, I broke that story. So Automobile Source failed to mention anything about a three liter. So does that leave the door open for more power? Perhaps the V8 that everybody's been clamoring for? That would certainly give Ford enough time to jam a V8 in there, but it's a little difficult to say right now. It is a little bit premature. My source said that the 3.5 liter engine will not fit in the Bronco the way it is set up now. I still believe that to be true. I haven't heard any other sources telling me otherwise. In fact, I've seen this in a couple other places. So don't expect a 3.5 liter Bronco in the near future, but maybe in this future pickup truck, we're not quite sure. So this is supposed to be out in the 24 timeframe as a 25 model. That seems like a long ways away. I think it's pretty likely that given the initial success, of the Bronco that we might see it a little bit earlier. Again, I put success in air quotes because 
Ford hasn't actually sold any yet. They just have a bunch of reser reservations. Now here's the second pickup truck that is gonna be out a lot sooner. This is probably not gonna be under the Bronco sub-brand. This is probably gonna be under the Ford sub-brand. And this is probably gonna be called the Ford Maverick. You've seen this sort of floating around, this name floating around for a little while. It's gonna be an all-wheel drive and it's gonna be based on the Ford C2 platform. So the Lincoln Corsair and the Bronco Sport are both based on the C2 platform. So this is definitely a unibody. So this is gonna be a, a pretty small pickup truck. And the prototype has already been shown to dealers. They've already seen this. So this is gonna be built in Ford's plant in Mexico, in Hermosillo, Mexico, presumably on the same assembly line as the Bronco Sport, although I don't have complete confirmation of that, but certainly at the same plant. And this is pretty strongly confirmed at this point because this has already been shown to some dealers. But wait, you might ask, what about the Ford Ranger? Aha, uh -huh, well, what about the Ford Ranger? Indeed, sir. So the Ford Ranger is right now the smallest pickup truck that you can get from Ford. However, this is gonna slot in below the Ranger. And we know that there is a new Ranger coming in pretty shortly. So the current Ranger starts at about $24,410. The sources at Ford Authority who have apparently spoken to the people at the dealers say this is gonna come in a little bit below $20,000. So with the next Ranger coming in, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a little bit higher than the $24,400 that we're at right now. Usually there's a price bump. So this upcoming pickup truck, this Maverick, is probably gonna be about $5,000 less. And I think that's a really good move from Ford, and here's why. As we know, vehicles have been getting super, super expensive lately, and everything that Ford makes and everything that a lot of other manufacturers make, like the Toyota Tacoma, which is about $26,000, are pretty expensive. There is a good demand, I think, and so does Ford for a small pickup truck. You know, it's not well optioned. It's a basic pickup truck that you can throw stuff in and beat it up and use it as a work pickup truck that doesn't have all the fancy stuff that they're trying to sell to consumers. So I see this as a really good move. I think there is space for it. And Ford does apparently too, because right now you've got the Chevy Colorado, which I think would be the main competition, which starts at about $21,300. So they're going directly after the Colorado sales and they're expecting to introduce it in late 2021 as a 2022 model so we should be seeing some spy photography we should be seeing some rumors and stuff popping up in the next couple of months is my guess there's two videos on screen right now one is probably about the Bronco click one subscribe if you like really appreciate you guys watching and I will see you very soon